Coronaviruses are a family of contagious viruses that can cause respiratory infections from the common cold to SARS. These viruses can mutate rapidly, resulting in the 2019 new coronavirus named SARS coronavirus 2, which has crown-like spikes that characterize the family. As with most viruses, SARS coronavirus 2 commonly spreads from an infected person to others through droplets in the air when coughing and sneezing, through close personal contact, or by touching a contaminated surface and then touching the face. Unless controlled, each infection typically results in two to three subsequent people being infected. Like other coronaviruses, SARS coronavirus 2 deposits its genetic material into host cells. The viral RNA reaches host elements called ribosomes, which act as factories that produce viral proteins. This facilitates replication of the viral genome and assembly of viral components, producing fully formed replicants that are secreted and further spread infection. Infection caused by SARS coronavirus 2 is known as COVID-19 and can cause fever, coughing and breathing difficulties, along with cold-like symptoms. Serious cases of COVID-19 can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and can lead to fatalities. Global health organizations have outlined preventive measures to reduce the chances of SARS coronavirus 2 infection, including refraining from touching the face with unclean hands and frequent hand washing with soapy water. As with previous global outbreaks such as swine flu, COVID-19 has gained global attention and treatment development is being accelerated. In a land where they openly create hybrids, where they make chimeras of human and pig embryos, in a place where they openly create abominations, something such as the coronavirus just all of a sudden comes out because someone ate a bat. I'm very certain there's more to it than that. Now whether this is something man-made and created and thrown on earth because of depopulation, or whether this is something that simply escaped from the lab and all of a sudden now we have it, one thing for sure is that the scriptures are becoming a reality and you cannot run from this any longer. Matthew 24, 7, for nation shall rise against nation. Even this past week with the coronavirus, weren't we attacking another nation? We sure were. Kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes have happened many times and through many years. All of these things have happened through many times and many years. But it's gradually getting worse and worse and worse. And what we're seeing with the coronavirus is something that I have not seen ever other than in 9-11. Disney World and the other theme parks are open. The decision by Disney and the other theme parks here in the capital of theme parks is that they will shut down beginning tomorrow night. And the mayor here for Orange County in Orlando says that this call by Disney and the other theme parks that followed suit was a billion dollar decision. 126 million visitors come to Orlando every year. So many drawn here by the mouse. Disney was first to announce it would close Sunday evening. Universal Orlando Resort with its wildly popular Wizarding World of Harry Potter followed. Then SeaWorld and Legoland. I'm Scott Van Pelt here at ESPN. This, this astounding and unprecedented story continues to evolve. Uh, at halftime with Adrian Wojnarowski, I suggested that uh, we would speak to him soon. I had no idea that it would be this soon. He has just tweeted within the past two minutes that the NBA is suspending the season. I Think of the many companies that had to come together and talk about this. You have the NBA shutting down. The NFL was already over, but if it was active, it would have been shut down. The XFL shut down. PGA Tour, NASCAR, Royal Caribbean, Carnival Cruises, Disney World. And that's just the modern companies that we know of in our side of the world. This is worldwide. The coronavirus has stopped the world economy on its track. Now, here are two things. One, you can really think 
that the powers that be that own these companies actually care about you and have all come together to lose billions of dollars in a day because they care about you. Or two, this is an event, an orchestrated event in my humble opinion to number one, tapper down the economy, which was much needed in my humble opinion. And number two, to make their next push. Just as 9-11 pushed the scenario of harsher and stricter laws that are enslaving humanity and stripping away your privacy, this is going to be a moment that we're going to remember in 10 to 15 years. Mark my words on it. I'm not a prophet. I'm simply telling you as I see it. This is going to be something that we will remember in 10 to 15 years. A moment where this sparked a rise in biometrics all over the world. And it doesn't matter if you're a Republican and it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat. They all want the same thing. Even Trump has spoken on biometrics at the border. Number eight, we will finally complete the biometric entry exit visa tracking system, which we need desperately. For years, Congress has required biometric entry exit visa tracking systems but it has never been completed. The politicians are all talk, no action, never happens, never happens. Hillary Clinton, all talk. Unfortunately, when there is action, it's always the wrong decision. Do you ever notice? In my administration, we will ensure that this system is in place. And I will tell you, it will be on land, it will be on sea, it will be in air. We will have a proper tracking system on land. It will be on sea. It will be in air. We will have a proper tracking system. And no, this is not an attack on Trump. So calm down. I know that people get upset when you talk about Trump, but he said it. That's a reality. That's what people are pushing for. That's what the entities that run this world are pushing for. Think about it. And this is how it's going to be sold. Imagine a world where outbreaks can be stopped in a moment. How in a moment? We have with biometrics. How with biometrics? Because biometrics is a gateway for them to lead into a microchip inside of your body. Imagine if they could look at a population and see what their body temperature is before any outbreak even occurs. They'll be able to see that these hundreds of people in this village already have a fever of 100 plus. Maybe, just maybe, something is wrong, we can put a stop to it right there and then. No expensive medical tests needed to be done. No waiting for an outbreak to happen to halt economies all over the world. We can stop it right there and then. But biometrics also has a lot of different benefits for you and your family. Ever wondered if it was safe enough to let your kid play outside? Well, with biometrics, you don't have to worry about that because if someone takes your kid, we'll know where your kid went. You always worry about your kid in daycare and in schools. Biometrics takes care of that as well. Your bank account, biometrics takes care of that as well. Last year, Wisconsin-based company Three Square Market announced its plans to install rice-sized microchips in its employees. The implants can be used to scan into the office building, to purchase food at work, and to log into the computers there. CEO Todd Westby is back with us to talk about how the program is going so far. So, Todd, what's it been like? How many of your employees at this point have chosen to have the chip implanted, and how many do you have to go? Yes, to date uh, we have uh, 196 employees and 92 of them are chipped to this day. Uh, and what's, the res what's it been like in terms of their experience? Has anybody said I want this thing out of me or uh, when they leave do they have to get it out? <laughs> We've had one employee that's left that had it removed. However, the vast majority of our employees absolutely love the conveniences that having this chip in their hand really brings to them. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, Todd, but why not a badge? Why do you have to implant a piece of equipment into people? If it can be lost, it will be lost. And uh, the very first day that I had this done, I actually had a late night interview and I forgot my ID card and I thought, ah, oh, I got a chip in my hand. 
and when I showed up at work, I scanned my hand and I was let in the front door. So it's really a huge convenience factor that uh, uh, the employees seem to like with it. It's very small. I've got a grain of rice in my hand, which I'm told approximates the size of these chips. So I kind of get that. But, you know, we all carry around our phones these days. We don't really lose those too often. Why not just just have people use their phone for this kind of thing? Because this is much more convenient. You can do a lot more really with this than you can your phone as far as uh, I can log into my computer with this, which I do every day. Uh, I can log into my phone with it. Uh, uh, I can pay for items if I forgot my credit card or my phone. Uh, I can log into work. Uh, this is the actual size of the chip. I don't know if you can see that, but it is the size of a grain of rice, literally. For the government's end, hey, no one can skip out on paying taxes. No one can skip out on paying their bills. They'll know where everyone's at, when everyone's at, and it does not matter. But it comes at a price. And there's always a catalyst. The catalyst is this, the coronavirus. And I humbly believe that this is nothing compared to the other catalysts that are going to come. This is not the only one. And what will happen from these type of events is that people will openly give away their freedom. It's already happening. Look at many places that you work at. You have to use your fingerprint to access their system. And look at the airports. Many airports are already using a system where biometrics is the way, is the key, is the way that it's going to be done in the future. Well, travel season is ramping up, and with that comes long wait times at the airport. But one company is allowing you to bypass the security lines for your biometric data. CBS 2's Chris Holmstrom joins us live now from LAX to explain. Chris. Pat and Jeff, it is 11.15 at night. As you can see behind me, traffic is bumper to bumper here. But take a look inside the airport. There's also long lines inside there as well. But what if I told you you could bypass TSA security lines? Well, there's a company for that. There's no denying LAX is one of the world's busiest airports. Nearly 90 million passengers each year. With that comes long lines, especially with TSA security. Or maybe not. Clear saves you time at the airport by allowing you to speed through security lines. But what exactly is Clear? They are a biometric identity company that uses your fingerprints or irises to get through the security process. Please come a little closer to the camera. Here's how it works. First, you scan your boarding pass, then either your fingers or your eyes. Please enter your eyes. Once you are clear, you bypass the ID line and go directly to the next security checkpoint. Howard Cass, the company's executive vice president. Clear allows you to uh, know with certainty that you're going to get into the security screening process in a really short period of time. Clear is currently in 28 major U.S. airports and growing. This couple from Arizona has mixed reactions to it. I think it's pretty cool that they can just scan your eyes, fingerprints, and you just go right on through. And with the rise of automation, I was at Walmart last night and about 1, 2 in the morning, and I wanted to check out the aisles to see how they were looking and the one thing i stumbled across was automation right in front of my eyes that's banana that's crazy that's taking our jobs man yeah that's, that's what they're trying to do that's it they take all our jobs and robots do it for free look at that that's what's coming that's the threat that we have it doesn't complain about how many hours it has to work or anything. The, the coronavirus, yes, is something that's dangerous. Yes, it's something that, in my humble opinion, you need to pray for every individual that has it. Pestilences are no joke. Pestilences are something that are there to remind people that there is a God and that you better turn to God. And it's a reminder that the scriptures are accurate and real. I can tell you firsthand with one salary at my house. My wife doesn't work because I have an autistic daughter and she stays home with our daughter with homeschooler with one income living check to check God has provided all of our needs and we live a humble life but he has provided for the ministry we don't use AdSense on the ministry I don't make money off of it I don't sell documentaries I don't sell DVDs so God provides when we depend on God and in this case with the coronavirus God would also provide yes use wisdom buy your water yes use wisdom wash your hands and if you gotta buy some toilet paper get that get that toilet paper action you need a clean booty in these times but man 
need a clean booty every day. And you need to wash your hands every day. 